So like the title of today's video says, we are gonna be trying out the new Replit agent. So yeah, this is the first time I have tried this, so I haven't even done anything yet. So I just signed up. It was a bit expensive, like so you might want to think about it. It's $25 for the core uh, plan. So I did this by month, uh, but I have to do that to get access to this Replit agent. So that's something you want to think about if you want to try it out. But of course you can just watch me try it out now. So, uh, I just watched a quick intro video he had here. An app of local landmarks so you can hear, based he's on just my describing location. the project, right? The agent right? Uh, presented me with a plan. If this plan is fully out. So I think we're just gonna try it. We're not gonna go through the tutorial here. So you can see they have the craft a perfect plan, keeps tabs on progress. I'm just gonna test it out and see what we can do here. So I think I wanna just do like a pretty simple chatbot now at the beginning. So I thought we can use the OpenAI uh, backend here, uh, GPT-4 or Mini or something, just a simple chatbot. And we maybe can do some Next.js, Chad, CN, frontend. So you can see they have this talk thing here to describe what you want to make. So I think I'm just going to try that and see if we can actually get something going here. Okay, so I quickly tried this. You can see it now, this... Um, uh, translator here, but it's not working too good on my accent. So when I tried to do some technical description of our project, uh, it didn't work too well. But it's probably because of my Norwegian accent, right? Uh, so I'm just going to stop this and I created the prompt uh, just in text. So let me just go through this. So I want to create a web app using Next.js and ChatGPT components as a front end. The web app should be a chatbot UI where the user can input messages. We must display the messages between the chatbot and the user. When the user sends a message in a text field, we will send this to the OpenAI API backend running on a Node.js Express server. Our app must, of course, have a bridge between the front and backend. We must also include a conversation history context between the user and the OpenAI chatbot to keep the conversation coherent. Can you start building out this web app, please? So that is what you're going to do. So I'm just going to click on start building now and let's see what happens here. So this is new to me too. Okay, so you can see we are configuring REPL, right? Uh, is this going to, yeah. Okay, so this is going to take us to kind of a new place here. So you can see this is more like the um, kind of a new interface, I guess. So you can see thinking, connected. Okay, we can X that out. So I guess this is starting now. I'm not quite sure, but I guess it's starting to create like a step-by-step -step plan. Uh, this has to do that, right? So remember, we want uh, a front end that is Next.js, Chad CN. I don't know if you can do that. I have no idea. Uh, I created a plan using Flask, Vanilla JS, OpenAI. Why did they choose that? I want the front end to be Next.js. And Chad CN back end should be uh, Node.js with Express. Please, can we interfere with that? So let's see what happens now. Why did it pick that? That was a bit strange, right? I specifically said that here. So let's see if we, <laughs> that's a bit annoying to be honest, but let's see if we can correct this. Maybe there are some limitations on Replit. I haven't tried it too much. Uh, absolutely, let me propose what we will build for you. Okay. So, yeah, like I said, this is quite new for me too. But let's see now. Uh, however, these technologies are currently... Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. So I approached the plan. Yeah, okay, we can do uh, Flask and like JS. Uh, that's fine. Uh... Okay, would you like to add any more features? Implement user auth, support? No, I think we're just gonna go with this. Okay, so that makes sense. If they don't have the support for that yet, okay, that's fine. So we can just do the vanilla JS and um, a Flask backend. That's fine for now. So I'm a bit interested to see how they're gonna handle the um, API keys because I it should know now that we need an API key for this. Okay, so we are creating our app. We created styles.css. Okay, so the UI here is pretty cool, right? Uh, you get like a good overview here of what the code is writing. Database, okay. Hmm. 
and we are getting these packages files templates we have a static that's probably the css right database.py main.py uh, okay so here we are installing these dependencies uh that was pretty cool ui so while this is thinking uh yeah let's just skip ahead a bit here okay so now we can see it created like a chat request so we are on the gpt4 model so okay so it's using this environment to get the open air key okay so that means we can probably just set that in the environment right okay so you can see here secrets key open air key so please provide your open air key okay so let me just go grab that so i'm just gonna paste it in here now and then do add secret right that was a pretty i, I like that that was a pretty nice way of doing this uh, so now we are running the flask app Restarted it. Do we have some errors? Maybe uh, I wonder if the app is gonna pop up now. Are we gonna have to go into the terminal? Okay Web view AI chatbot Okay, so let's try it out. Hello. So I'm expecting something like how can I assist you? Yeah, okay. That was pretty sweet uh, uh, Let's test if it has any memory Write a Python code to say hello world. So let's do that. Hopefully we get a like a code. Okay, what was my prev question? Okay, good. So we have the conversation that we asked for that kind of keeps the context. Okay, that's great. Let's see if we can actually do a dark mode button here. Uh, yes it's working so it's asking about this let's see what happens yes it's working good okay so is this gonna be some kind of report maybe so we have the progress here okay suggested deploying project i've completed the plan successfully the following steps were executed okay so it's kind of like a summary of something here right uh now let's add a dark mode toggle button i want to see if we can do that pretty easy should we deploy this uh, i guess we could would be pretty cool to try it uh yeah we can try that afterwards so set up your deployment i think this should be like a one click solution to deploy this so that's going to be interesting to try right uh but it was a good start here looks pretty neat uh, but the thing is like of course this does not have existing code base work so i guess for now this is just going to be to op to all only build small tools you need quickly right because you can't load up a previous existing code base that you built from scratch here i guess okay so we are uh, doing some styling here so let's go into styles did we do some kind of dark mode here? Okay, we did dark mode. That's pretty cool. Um, is the dark mode toggle button visible and functional? Let me refresh this. I don't see any dark mode button here. Uh, no, I don't see the button. Maybe restart server or app let's try that i don't see any button here uh, but maybe if we refresh this what if we x this out okay so we have some options here we can search through your files okay code search so now we stopped running the flask app yeah i can ask to do a restart and um, we are running app yeah okay Okay, so it is loading. Okay, here we have the dark mode button. Okay, that was pretty neat. Hello. Hi again. Okay. Yeah, that worked pretty good. That was pretty sweet. So, yeah. Pretty neat, if you ask me. Uh, I guess the only thing I want to try now... I want to do one more thing after, but let's try to deploy this. Uh, yes, this was good. Uh, good. Uh, I am ready to deploy. Let's try that. 
I guess there are some costs related to deployment, but uh, I'm gonna try it and see if it works. Uh, okay, um, okay, let's deploy oops, uh, the app. I guess we can just click here, but I wanna see if we get any instructions down here. I add a step to deploy, okay, on to Heroku, okay. We need to make some preparation, use Heroku CLI. Are you ready to proceed? Uh, I guess so, we just started. <laughs> uh, we created a prop file and got a unicorn, restarted the app. Okay, so now we need uh, an Heroku API key. Okay, I think I might have that. So let me just, uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm just gonna paste in my Heroku API key here. And let's see now. <laughs> Uh, if that is all I have to do, yeah, I'm super happy with that. Okay, so we got uh, deployed to Flask application to Heroku. I'm just gonna click on this to deploy to production. So let's see what this is actually. Uh, okay, so we have this. Uh, I'm just gonna try to keep it as simple as possible. So let's just call it chat bridge or something like that. Dot replit dot app. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep it like this. Don't do anything. So I'm just gonna deploy this. And uh, let's see how long this takes now and I'll be right back. Okay, so that was done. So that took only five minutes. That was pretty sweet. Uh, I like that. So let's just copy this address here. Let's open a incognito window, let's paste it in, and let's try it out here. Hello. Hell. Okay, that was pretty bad. Uh, hello. <laughs> Can you uh, write a Pi code to calc 5 uh, divided by 5, 4 divided by 5? Uh, okay. Seems to be working pretty good. We can do this. Uh, okay. Pretty sweet. That was super easy, right? Uh, but now I'm just gonna take this down again. Uh, I think we're gonna do create one more thing uh, to test it out, and we're gonna try to deploy that too. So yeah, pretty smooth experience, if you ask me. That was super easy. I think I spent about uh, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes total to create this. I could have done it much faster, faster, right? Because this is my first time trying this. Uh, but let's uh, shut this down. Uh, let's start with a brand new uh, page at uh, the start of the agent uh, part. Okay, so the final thing I want to try to build is let's create a web app where the user can fetch the live Bitcoin price using the OpenAI or Open API from CoinGecko. The front end should be a retro terminal style that displays the Bitcoin price in real time with a backlog of one hour. Hour maybe? Include a retro terminal graph. Let's create a web app, please. So what I try to do, uh, let's try to run this in the background now. So this is kind of one of the pros using the Replit agent, right? Is that you just can start it here in the background. And while this is running, we can go a bit back and forward. Let's head over to paint. And I'm just going to do like a comparison between the Replit agent and cursor. This is very first impression, right? Uh, but the first thing I think is Replit is for like... Uh, I would say new tools uh, or apps, right? So maybe like small apps or something like this. Maybe small tools, small tools or something like this that you need like quick. Uh, I don't see me building like a more complex app. So this is more uh, complex, I would say, uh, right? Uh, bigger projects bigger projects and I would say cursor is of course for existing uh, code bases right uh, I don't know if Replit has any attention of doing that uh, so now we, let's just continue this I'm not gonna implement any team switcher no let's just do it like this and uh, let's just run this in the background now uh, some other things here, so the Replit agent, what I think is good for, yeah, like I said, new tools, apps, that is pretty small. And it's, of course, more uh, autonomous, like we are doing now. More autonomous. 
cursor, more complex, more uh, bigger projects, existing code bases, and I think it's more for advanced users, right? Uh, maybe the Replit agent is it's easier to deploy, right? Easier deployment. Uh, this requires more of an existing third party to deploy. I guess there are some way to connect cursor, I think, to Replit to actually deploy it that way. We might do that in a future video. But like my first impression here is that the Replit agent is more for uh, newer tools, right? Smaller tools, maybe smaller web apps. It's more automated, easier to deploy while cursor are more complex, uh, bigger projects, existing code bases, more for advanced users that had used VS Code uh, Studio before. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. Uh, okay, that was pretty cool. Current Bitcoin price. Uh, yeah, so let's take a look at this. But first, uh, I just want to wrap this up. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. I'm going to do a few more videos on the Replit agent to see if we can actually challenge it a bit more. Because what we did today was pretty small, uh, but successful. I like the app, I like the UI they created, but uh, I kind of want to see Next.js maybe soon, I hope. So let's see about that. Uh, okay, so this is uh, <laughs> our tracker. So I kind of wanted to see if we can actually get some graph here. Uh, I don't see the graph now. Do we need more data points? We might need some more data points before we... Okay, so now we got a new data point, I guess. But they didn't plot it. Did it? So how often is this updating now? Let's take a look at the code here. So it's every... Update every minute. Okay, so every 60 seconds. That's good at least. But let's see now what happens. Okay, so here we got something new. Uh, okay, I, I kind of like this. I think it looks pretty cool, right? I just want to quickly see what happened now. Uh, I don't see any graph, but let's see if this changes. So I want to try to deploy this just for fun, right? So let's just let this cook and let's try to deploy it and see how it looks in uh, the Igni Incognito browser. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go hit set up your deployment. 12 per month or like hour, okay. That's not too expensive, so let's deploy it. I'm gonna take it down again, but just for fun. So let's try to deploy this, open it in a incognito window, and uh, let's see how it looks. So I'll be back when this is uh, deployed. Okay, so that took about three minutes. That was not too bad, right? So let's just grab this. Uh, let's do uh, incognito, paste it in, and uh, let's see now. Yeah, this looks pretty sweet, right? So you can see uh, 54 to 36. Uh, I'm not too confident in the graph here <laughs> uh, if that's gonna work. But let's see now. So we're gonna let this run for a couple of minutes and see if anything changes here. So yeah, I'm just gonna speed this up and you can see if... Let's do a couple of more data points and see if it works. Okay, so as you can see, there are some flaws in the logic here. It's not uh, fetching a new API call each minute. So let me try to fix that and I'll be right back. Okay, so after looking a bit more into the API, you can see it doesn't really update. It's just every fifth minute or something. But if we look at our deployed app now, boom, you can see it's working, right? So we get this graph here. Of course, we can expand our data points if we wanted to. So yeah, I'm kind of happy with this. It looks pretty cool. Uh, let's say we set this to each five minutes and we kind of get a more interesting graph, right? Or we can expand this to one whole hour. So that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, pretty happy with this. Turn ticket turned out pretty good. Uh, if you just go back here, just a quick wrap up. Uh, I'm going to definitely be testing out Replit Agent more. Uh, of course, we're going to do more cursor, other AI coding ideas. Uh, so yeah, just stay tuned. A lot of interesting stuff happening. Uh, we, of course, in September fall a lot of new models can drop soon so it's gonna be interesting to watch this space going forward thank you for tuning in hope you enjoyed it uh, if you want to become a member of the channel give some support uh, gonna be some members video coming up soon i hope that could be a bit interesting more of like an in-depth tutorial maybe of replit agent so yeah thank you for tuning in today hope you found it interesting and we speak soon